be misconceptions about what design actually does. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, often people have this view about just trying to sell products with a nice styling. And in reality, it's so much connected to the whole company's process and the values that they are uh, they have in in their corporation. So um, design should be an expression of the good values that you want to build in your company. And also with designers, there is al always also uh, sometimes a, a quite defensive attitude of trying to prove a monetary value of what you're doing or trying to to bring the good cases where you you see see the good cases how how it's supposed to be done if the willingness is not there to change or you know wanting to become a different company then it will be difficult to sell design services to that company unless you understand what you can become because that's the interesting part of design that it can actually change corporate culture and bring a completely new experience to, to customers. We work with the process from three different perspectives, you could say. One is about how do you actually create the customer experience throughout the company. There you need to adapt to several kinds of processes and, and several kinds of interfaces where, within the company and towards the customer. And that's where we need to understand the, the customer needs in, in that and the customer experience of interacting with Volvo. Uh, secondly, you have the user experience of a particular product or a particular service where you need to understand more in detail that particular product requirement or uh, the context that it's in. And thirdly, we need to understand customers in a broader view, you know, where are their minds tomorrow and how will society react to changes that we see around us. And that's what trigger innovation and new thinking too with our design team. So you could say it's like uh, understanding the customer, the user and society. So it's like three different levels of involving also our customers into the process. Emotional capital is about understanding uh, what you are building into your product, your brand and your services uh, in terms of, of, of what kind of emotions it will trigger with uh, the customer or the user. And, and it's not only about, you know, oh, this product makes me feel good. Uh, it's sometimes about understanding this, this sort of library of preconceptions or misconceptions even that we might have as people. Our brains are constantly using information, visual information or sense or uh, even tactile uh, information, putting that together in a very quick way in our brains. Now, what kind of concrete effect does this have on our work? Well, uh, we have examples where uh, a certain design might be brilliantly done, but still the customer didn't connect it to the real values. We have a truck that was sold with a certain design, uh, but it didn't attract the customer segment. And when we redid the design, more trying to capture that particular group of customers, suddenly they could understand the quality of the product. So. The specification sheet was exactly the same, but the change of design make that those qualities more understandable for the customer. So they understood that this product is for for me. And that's not just to trigger like a good feeling of you're like, wow, it's attractive, because of course that's important. But as I said, both of those designs were attractive but one of them really connected to that customer's feeling of what do I want, what do I need? So that's where sales rocketed for that particular product. 
you need to be consistent with uh, what you what kind of values you want to build. So the emotional capital is about being really consistent in your approach. So in your process, you need to have these kind of leading stars for your design. So what it is expresses must be consistent with what you then also experience with using the product. What we often do is that we have a theme for the development of a product, like for the cab of uh, the articulated hauler, the whole theme was control, the feeling of control, which led to the positioning of the driver or the operator in the center of, of, of the cab, which gives so much benefits in terms of both comfort but also of control and being able to see everything perfectly around you and also all the sort of the styling cues the positioning of the pillars the how we shape the hoods everything needs to be directed from that sort of emotional or experience that we want to to create so that's very much you know having a consistent approach around that theme the changes that we see around us in, in society and in technology, it more and more leads us to understanding that we can no longer just work with the sort of the machine itself or the drivetrain, both from an environmental point of view or from a technological point of view, how where, where things are moving. We need to put the product more in context because efficiencies both in terms of profitability for our customers and for the environment to use less, to produce more. That's where we need to understand how can we provide the services, the, the logistic solutions or the very, you know, the interlink between the product, digital solutions and the context, the, uh, understanding the whole process for our customers. That's where a lot of, of innovation will, will be for, for our coming products and, and for the future. Our role, being a design department within the company, is of course to, to create that consistent approach to our customers and by that changing the corporate culture with you know, how we approach our customers, what kind of experience we are creating for them. Uh, but also our role is uh, to provoke or challenge our management internally. So as much as we're uh, working with this exterior connection and the contact involving our customer and understanding their needs, as much as an internal role of presenting or challenging management with and even challenging ourselves with radical ideas about what the future might be for us and what kind of solutions we must provide. Changing the corporate culture by challenging and constantly reminding management about what we need to do, where we need to move to be relevant for the business. <laughs>